Salsa Gang, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's White Coat Wednesday, as you can see. I know I've been gone for a while, but your homegirl has been having technical errors. So, about it's been almost a month, honestly. Um, my ring light broke on me, so it broke on me, I want to say a little longer, a little over two months ago, but I was able to kind of rig it. And prop it up against things and let it still do its job but then more pieces of my ring light began to fall off so I had to kind of work without a ring light and I feel like for my white coat Wednesday videos I want them to be a little bit more well put together and I want them to be as professional as they can be versus my vlogs where I really don't need a ring light I can just vlog at a car vlog at stores or so forth so today I will be discussing what qualifies you to become a clinical social worker. And thanks again to my supporter who actually wanted me to discuss this topic a little more. I am more than welcome to engage with my subscribers. So if you have any questions related to college life, social work, career wise and social work, don't hesitate to comment in my comment section or message me on my social media platform. In today's video, I will be discussing the qualifications of becoming a clinical social worker. There is a disclaimer, all qualifications for each state are not the same and may vary from state to state. However, in Michigan, I will be discussing the qualifications here. And I also will be discussing what qualifies you as a clinical social worker from a legal standpoint and a technical standpoint. Here in Michigan, you have to have a master's of social work. You cannot have a master's of psychology. You cannot have a master's in sociology. You cannot have a master's in criminal justice and so forth. I think you guys get the picture, right? It must be a MSW, master's of social work. Here in Michigan, you have to gain 4,000 supervised hours. Supervised meaning you job shadow under a fully licensed social worker. A fully licensed social worker would have met all of the criteria of the things that I will discuss in this video. So I know most social workers they go and they pay for their supervision and some jobs actually offers supervision and you can just write off the hours of work. However some social workers don't go by that rule because you don't want to feel like you have to stay in a particular job or job title just for those hours and secondly most social workers like to go into entrepreneurship where they can be billable and work in a private practice of their own so a lot of social workers pay um, individuals that have their own private practice such as social workers that do um, counseling marriage counseling family counseling behavioral health ABA therapy things like that they will shadow under those social workers to gain that experience so that once they do become fully licensed, they will be able to have the skill set in place to become their own clinic. You cannot gain your supervision in less than two years, which makes a lot of sense. You do not want to cram 4,000 hours into one year because then it looks like a rush job. So the state is very particular in how much time you have to obtain the 4,000 hours. Also, you must pass the ASWB exam. You must pass the ASWB exam. And I'm being so dramatic on that part because as a social worker, and most social workers know, that exam can be very, very, very trying. I've known social workers that had to take the test several times. It's not an easy test. It's very competitive. You have to score 70 five percent or more to pass so that's one thing you want to keep in mind um, there's a lot of study material out there there's a lot of groups on Facebook out there to help you prepare for this exam there's so much content on YouTube I know personally a lot of social workers have succeeded with passing their license licensing exam during their first try with studying with the therapist development center I myself purchased that exam material and I'm just gonna be honest I've been procrastinating um, once you start working in the field it's kind of hard for you to kind of step back and study because 
you're so drained or you overwhelmed or you just don't have the time and day to study. So right now I have been kind of um, balancing back and forth with my my work life, you know, then the YouTube life, and then just having time overall to study. I have started studying the material, and the material, I would say, is great. I'm someone that cannot just study by the book, which I did go and purchase Apgar's books, like, right after grad school, because I thought that was the right way to go. I haven't touched those books at all. So, I'm the type of person where I'm a visual learner. The Therapist Development Center actually provides you with almost a course. Like, you're in school, they break things down for you. You have a teacher that actually reads through the exam questions. She breaks the questions down in ways that you understand. She also helps you look at the exam from a different standpoint. So, I really do feel like the Therapist Development Center is the way to go. I don't see any flaws in it as of right now. They also give you um, 50 questions well, where you can go and practice however many times you need. Uh, Therapist Development Center, they actually stay with you until you pass. So if you sit for the exam, they do give you a deadline, but it's up to you. Like say for instance, you, you want to sit for the exam, but you haven't studied yet. And then your um, therapist development center is going to expire. They do give you the chance to extend it. So they stay with you until you pass. And it's very expensive. So I think that's that was like a plus and very helpful for you. And if you do sit for the exam and do not pass, you still can re-register and study for the exam. So, and I want to touch bases on a technical standpoint. So what I mean by technical... I'm talking in the terms of working in the field as a master's social worker. So when you're working in the field as a master's social worker, a lot of the facilities you're working at are already signing you off as a clinical social worker, depending on the type of work you do. Your role, your job title, your job role is considered a clinical social worker. So for instance, working in the medical field, you have to have a license limited license so when you're working under a license you're a clinical technician you're a clinical social worker so that's what i meant by a technical standpoint because you are a clinical social worker however you just don't have that full license but you're still doing things that most people can't do without that limited license or that master's behind their name. You're considered a clinical social worker if your job title requires you to do things that put your license on the line. For an example, working in a medical field, you're going to work with a lot of psych patients that have mental health concerns and that can go through mental health crisis. And just to be on the safe side, you're working under the hospital as a liability and you're a liability to the hospital based off your job role. So when working with psych patients, there's forms you have to fill out. You have to know psych medication, psych terminology, diagnosis. You at times will have to fill out forms and send it to the state, let them know, hey, I made contact with this patient. This patient is part of my caseload and they suffer from mental illnesses because you don't want anything to backlash on the agency you work for by not following the proper guidelines because working with people that suffer from severe mental illnesses can be very, very challenging and it can be tedious. There's a lot of things you have to do. You have to dot your T's. I always say that. You have to dot your I's and cross your T's when working with psych patients because you do not want anything to happen to where you were working with that case as a licensed professional and you did not do what was required of your job so yes like i was saying if your job is requiring you to do things that will put your license on the line you are considered a clinical social worker so that was a brief vlog on what qualifies you as a clinical social if worker. you have any topics or things you want me to touch bases on i will make a vlog about it um, I would like to say that this channel is just not one channel that focuses on social work. I also focus on lifestyle, relationships, and I also touch bases on college conversation, college discussions, college topics. So anything within that framework, I am willing to 
engage with you. I am willing to post more about it. If you're a freshman going off to college and you just have simple questions, feel free to message me on Instagram or YouTube. You can uh, comment under this video and I will get back with you. Thank you and thanks for watching.